Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Acres. We're Henry and Irene. We're busy building our homestead in the high desert of northern Arizona. As you can see, there's an awful lot of bare ground. Now the hillside behind us is even worse. And that leads to erosion. In the distance you can see some grass. One year ago, there was basically no vegetation. Oh, there was about 10% in a few places, just like here. But over the last year, we have more grass coming in. Now this grass is not native grass. That's all been choked out by these imports. But at least we're getting some cover. We've been working for 17 years to control erosion on this part of our property. We own 43 acres in the high desert and controlling erosion is a really critical piece of maintaining our property. We're having some good grass come in. It's not what we'd like, but at least it's coming in and is providing some coverage. Gophers are a massive problem on our property. There's basically nothing we can do to stop it. And one of the problems they create is they will eat the roots of all the plants. They killed a bunch of our fruit trees. If you've been with us in the greenhouse before, you know this is an ongoing project. It's February still, and we have lots happening in here, lots. So let me take you on a quick tour, then we're gonna do a quick respray, and we're gonna get on with the day because there's lots happening. The weather outside is very iffy. We, are, we have high winds today. We have a storm that's rolling in. I actually need to check the forecast again to see when it's going to hit because they're a little vague about that. But let's go around and we'll talk about everything. So, let's see. Pots. Pots and pots and pots. <laughs> Lots of them. Uh, Emerald Crown, Atlantis. Those are both broccolis. That is also a uh, emerald crown. These will be potatoes. This is Hercules carrots, and I don't know if you can see or not. There's just a few little guys up in here so far. It's been chilly, um, but I don't really think this was the first guy up. I think this little guy over here was the first guy up. But we're starting to see more and more popping up. So hopefully within another week or so. Now we're going to be very cold this week. So not much I can do about that. 
These labels are not sticking on. I am not happy with that. They usually stick so well, you have trouble getting them off. Uh, but this one tells me that this is an Austrian crescent potato. This is an Atlantis broccoli. These are mochum carrots. This is a harvested cabbage. So there's actually been two out of here. And this will be reused. Lettuce. We have Nancy over here. We have a broccoli over here. And then this is Salanova. These are all Salanovas. This is Emerald Crown. This is Seaside Spinach. Seaside, yes. Seaside Spinach. This is our second batch of spinach coming up. There's our first batch. I actually need to harvest them. They've gotten bigger than I normally like them to be, but they that's what it is. I just, uh, this week was very crazy, as usual. To be honest, we ate mostly cabbage and broccoli and some green beans from the freezer, so just didn't get around to the spinach. Tiara cabbage, two of them, and a uh, lettuce. Uh, two more tiara cabbages here. Uh, these are also tiara cabbage. Kohlrabi, two different kinds. The quick star is ready. There's several of them this size. I usually like to let them get a little bit bigger, like those guys back there. Um, we just have to decide when we're going to eat them because we've had so much else to eat that there was no room in our stomachs. These are uh, Marathon broccoli and they have finally started to put up some decent side shoots. As you can see, we've got some decent side shoots coming on here. Some of them are better than others. Yeah, these will make perfectly good broccolis. Uh, lots more cabbage. This is all, um, meh, brain just fell out. Copenhagen. These are all Copenhagen cabbages in here. And this is rutabaga. And oh, we're starting to get some nice size on these guys now. Let me see if I can get in here. <laughs> I don't want to break any, any branches. But I think you can see there's some nice size rutabagas coming along in here now. And we were amazed last year when we grew rutabagas at how tasty and sweet they were in comparison to the dried up old crap that we get in the grocery store. Amazing. Garlic, garlic, garlic. Ah, this is all broccoli in here and I need to harvest today again. Got a whole stack of side shoots. I'm noticing that the bottoms of these side shoots are now pretty tough. So um, I have to decide. These have been, he, these here in this bucket have been harvested since Thanksgiving. So, you know, November, so figured November's over. Thanksgiving, I mean, uh, December, January, February. It's almost three months of, har months of harvest right now. They may be kind of like getting a little tough at this point, but I certainly can't complain. We've had like buckets, literally, of broccoli out of this. And there's tons of side shoots on a bunch of these. Some of these were harvested really recently, so they don't have side shoots yet. These are our pak choy. These are our new kohlrabis. So, what happens now? Well, if you've been following us, we had a minor infestation of aphids that came in from a friend's place. So I've been watching all the plants that were in the surrounding area around it. We believe that we discovered the aphids before they reached their flight stage, when they were still just gooey little larval sort of things. I've been watching for any sign of bugs anywhere. And so far, so good. No bugs. <laughs> One of the things I have to remind myself always is people are always warning you not to use too much fertilizer because if you use too much fertilizer, you won't get any fruits. Well. What they're talking about is you don't want to have a giant tomato plant and no fruit on it. But if what you're growing is, oh, lettuce or cabbage, for instance, 
what you're eating is not a fruit, you're eating an actual plant. So being super concerned about accidentally giving them too much nitrogen and therefore causing them to grow more foliage is really not an issue. I've got to tell a story on myself here. These are not new plants. This is Nancy, that's the particular variety. And um, we really liked it, but it was starting to get shaggy. And we also had a bunch of tip burn on it because really we'd had, the frosts in here had gotten to be pretty rough. So we decided we would just harvest those. I did. These are actually plants that have grown back off the roots of the existing plants, not anything new I planted. And obviously they look perfectly fine. I could harvest leaves off of those right now for a salad and they'd be great. Our gorgeous calendula. This has been the most amazing thing ever. I'm seriously tempted to always have calendulas, calendulas in here. This is the most cheerful thing on the planet in the middle of the winter when you're looking at brown, because that's what it is here in the middle of the winter, unless it's got snow on the ground, it's brown. And these have just been the most amazing, cheerful thing imaginable and just absolutely loaded with flowers. I mean, look at the clusters of, of uh, flower buds on here. It's just, it's loving it, man. It's loving it. I have a little container. This is my spray container of neem oil mixed up. And I have enough in here to respray this one plant here. I'm going to throw in a nitro glove so that I don't have to spray my hand. <laughs> uh, we always keep nitro gloves on hand for an assortment of reasons. One of which is uh, sometimes the chemicals I work with in my studio are not the nicest. Now, by the way, I have not seen any new aphids. And you might say, well, if you haven't seen any new aphids, why are you spraying? Well, just because I haven't seen any doesn't mean there aren't any there. This particular plant had almost no aphids on it. In fact, it's the only plant that's been allowed to stay down here. The only leaf that actually had aphids on it was the one that was on the ground in very close proximity to a couple of other plants that did have aphids. I see one aphid here. It looks dead, <laughs> which is just fine with me. I'm going to spray underneath these leaves again, just as if they had an infestation. And I'm also going to spray the surface here, just in case there's any eggs on the surface. I don't want to be too OCD, OCD about this, but I want to be careful. This doesn't mean I'm not gonna wash my left arm, but <laughs> it does mean that I am a little less soaked with this stuff. I also try not to breathe it too much. There will probably be some overspray on this. One of the nice things about this is I have no intention of harvesting right next to it today anyway, but if I was, I would not worry about it particularly. I would read the instructions. What I've also been doing is I've been checking like the neighboring plants here just to make sure nobody seems to have, you know, gotten over in there. I need to add a little bit more of this. I'm going to make a half a batch. A few moments later. This will go in the trash. I never, ever, ever allow things like that to be reused. That's one of those definite no-nos. When they say only use it once or, you know, on your plants or any of those rules that they give you, follow them. They're there for a reason. If you'll think about how hard it is to kill bugs and you've got something that will actually kill bugs, then just think it can't all be awesome for people either. Now, I only use organic stuff in here in terms of bug killers, uh, things that are considered to be safe for organic farmers. But, uh, you know, 
lead is organic too, and so is mercury, and so is digitalis, and a bunch of other things that can kill you if you're not supposed to be using them. This is the isolation nursery. <laughs> ah, not really very isolated. It's uh, just down at the downwind side of the of the greenhouse. I've also been checking these guys over. These guys suffered a little bit of frost damage this week, which is not shocking. Um, I'm just, I'm not, I guess the best way to put it is I'm just not going to worry about it. I can only worry about so many things. Um, there's some aphids on here which appear to be dead, but what I'm going to do is get in here. I'm a little concerned about these the Brussels sprouts because they don't look super happy. But like I say, they have some frost damage, so I guess if I froze, I wouldn't be super happy either. The purple pak choy actually looks pretty happy. I fertilized it. My goal is to just grow this like crazy and get it out of here. <laughs> Does that make sense? I really want to taste it. So I'm going to be more careful with this than I would be with the varieties I normally grow because I know how they behave. And that's the advantage of working with the same varieties every year is you do develop a sense for how things behave in the weather. I'm going to take this leaf off. Excuse me, Jack. Back up. Back up. There's some aphids on there, but they appear to be dead. But I'm not going to push my luck by leaving them in here just in case they're not. <laughs> if I'm not finding any live aphids, why the heck would I spray again? Well, because there may be some. And what I want to do is make sure that there aren't any, 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 anywhere. We grow in this greenhouse 12 months of the year, including in the depth of summer. And the last thing I want is a major infestation of anything that's going to be problematic. So what I'm doing here is kind of rinsing off the top. Make sure there's no aphids on the top here. And then I'm getting underneath. It's amazing how much nooks and crannies you get on these things in terms of places where critters can hide. And that's why I want to make sure that I'm very generous with my sprays. I don't have to worry about it getting too hot today. Um, we're getting into our pre-storm phase here. We have uh, a series of storms that's going to come through. It's going to be kind of vague in this area as to which is one storm and which is another, I think. We have current forecast that's going to hit 12 degrees one of these nights. I think that's got it pretty well, actually. Jack wants to make sure he doesn't get left in here. 